Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. We are looking at empty shelves in my south facing Blooming Alley. And look at that beautiful sky. It's a crisp morning, but it's going to warm up and I am going to take advantage of this gorgeous light. And I have to bring a lot of orchids outside, but as a follow up to bringing the orchids indoors, let me show you now whether they fit and what has happened in my grow space aka dining room so here they all are and you know what <laughs> look at this how is this possible look at this space this used to be full of 15 centimeter pots two rows all the way down used to be full now it's not I also used to have quite a little task of getting all my orchids up here especially the complex hybrids phalaenopsis they used to take a lot of space. Well, now they're just there and I have a few on the corner shelves up here. Uh, I'm baffled. Up here are my top guns, highlight orchids. And you can see how I have space underneath. None of the pots are crammed up to the point that I would have had to cram them up last year. Huh. Okay, so yeah, my Blooming Alley indoors is this shelf facing me as I turn the corner. These are too big. I don't want them to be crammed together because I've got space, I've put them here. Incredible, I don't understand. Down here are my summer bloomers, no lights on. And I only have the light on at the moment for the filming because they're all going to go outside. But before I do that, I wanted to answer the question, did they fit? So my summer bloomers are down here. Um, I've got plenty of space on that shelf back there. I am confused. I know I lost some orchids in 2021, but uh, not this much. Let's move on a little bit and continue. Here are my angracoids. I have got my tripod standing always right when i'm not using it of course but right there so there's no accidental bumping into roots i literally have to walk around the tripod and then this root is obviously very very precious so i take care when i get into this area where i've put this pot of the cattleya holdenii because it also has a long root so this is like danger zone, root zone. If I only consolidate that in one area, then I will remember to be super careful when I'm maneuvering around here. All right, so this is incredible. I am well, well pleased. Oh, yes. My telumnias are all on a tray right here. And that tray is gonna go outside. I put my Sologeny Lime Bay right here because I can enjoy the bloom. And then I have the assorted fowls here, a complex hybrids and the pulchara. Sorry if my speech is a little bit weird this morning. I haven't had coffee yet because I need to get these orchids outside. But I wanted to film this because otherwise I can't do a follow up to my did they fit. Anyway, my pulchra is up here because she's a bit wobbly and I don't want to keep moving her. She doesn't move in or out. She stays here just to keep her protected. And the constant movement with the root tips, I'm very, very cautious about that. That's why she is not going anywhere. All right, so up here I have my Schilleriana, which is okay. I may need to move her into a little bit more light, but for now. And then down here, I have all the collective little pots that sort of match and go well together. My Jumelia is protecting my Podangas, which is protecting my Leonis. My Leonis will get a little bit of direct sun because the sun comes in here when it turns the corner and hits this shelf like full light in the morning, which is great. And then all my seedlings down here, they're not going anywhere. I'm not even moving those in or out because I want to protect them as well and not just keep jiggling them around. But here they also get full morning sun when the sun turns the corner. And I do move, for example, my Alvarenguenses outside but for the most part, all the orchids that are down here, they stay down here and they have enough light. And that includes my Prostechia Garciana Alba. They get full on light. So the big one 
protects the seedlings in the back a little bit from the direct sun, which even though it is winter, can be quite hot, especially if there's no airflow like today. So I'm gonna move you very carefully, very carefully turn the corner. <clears throat> I've got my square pots on the floor because I don't have any stands to put them on. I need those for filming. Uh, not too pleased about this because the marble is quite cold. I already have evaporative cooling because of my leka and self-watering. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. We'll have to do the best, but I've got the Maxima, the Guatemalensis here, and the CG Roebling over there, and the Pandorata right there. But I am astounded about what is all this space? Look. What happened? <laughs> I thought I would be in dire straits. But this is perfect because I can reach everything. Some things are touching, but not really because even here, my Digbiana and a massive Perforata next to it, they're not touching the leaves. I'm not usually bothered if leaves touch or if they don't touch. It doesn't faze me because as I carry them out, I have my garlic alcohol ready and if I need to do anything, I do it right then and there and deal with it. But I am astounded by the amount of space. So these 15 centimeter pots up there, they were doubled up in the row the way they are now and the full shelf along the wall was covered. Now, yeah, some orchids went into bigger pots, but bigger pots would then also mean more space. Okay, so when the other top guns have finished blooming, maybe that'll fill that space, but then I still have space on the shelf where they're standing now. I'm absolutely flabbergasted, I can't tell you, but I'm happy. I'm really happy it worked out this way. I've got my hot growers here. I don't move them. There's too much going on there. It's, oof, they're too tall. So they get some direct sun when the sun comes in and as this is facing west, so a lot of afternoon sun. So I'm not moving this shelf in and out at all. That includes my Anselias. There's two right here. And my Bicornutum right here. And the Tubeculata that's right there with its growth sticking out, trying to get it to bend over to its compadres. So all the hot growers that can tolerate high, high light, they are over here and they don't get moved. There's another Anselia, and my Demophorcus lowii is down there as well. Let me go around this way. <clears throat> there we go. But I will move it because I don't have proper insulation from the door. So eventually that's going to be too cold and he will move back a little bit. But here at least he gets direct sun. Only in winter does he get direct sun. And then I have my hanging orchids that don't appreciate the cold. The loose nearies, two of them, one of them being the blue, and up there is Neo Rainbow Forest. And they all have to go out. I'm not moving my Catacetinae here. I've got two spikes going on Jack of Diamonds, so he's not going anywhere. Last year I busted the spike. <laughs> These are male blooms, so that'll be a good thing to watch. And I've got After Dark Black Pearl on a mission here as well. Oh. It's going to be nerve-wracking. This spike is doing its little curly whirly. I've tried to help it to recognize where it's supposed to go, but I'm not touching it. They look tough, but they snap easily. And then there's also here my Francis Fox. And all of these are now going to go outside, except for the paths in the back. They stay where they are. I get afternoon sun into this corner here, even though there's a lot going here on the right. There's a lot going on. These fowls do get direct sun late afternoon, which is fine. At least it's not a hot burning sun. It is a very comfortable sun that sort of like lights them up just for a little bit before it goes dark and gets nasty again. But I am amazed at how much space I've got. I really truly am. I'm going to have to probably lift up all the Bulbophyllum, similar orchids down there, bring them up a shelf, it can't hurt seeing as I've got the space. Crazy, absolutely crazy. 
My entire ICU section is over there in the corner. So I'm going to get that out one day and do a video on what I've got going on there. But they fit. They better than fit. They fit really well. Little Mr. Sidia is now dropping all its blooms. And Leonis is still looking pretty, pretty promising. Those two spikes, I'm liking the look of them. So yeah, that's the answer to the question. Did they fit? Oh, hang on a second. Up here I have the mounts that come in. Ianopsis popcorn haruri. This is my Brassavola flageralis. My little Tolumnia hoxoniana and my little lava burst. And there we have Perinii. Everything is backlit. I do apologize, but they fit. I'm astounded. I really, really am. It's almost like war. Oh, you know why? Not really, but huh. Most of my Rapiculus Lalias that were last year a little bit too tender to leave outside are now all outside. But they were little itty bitty pots. Even that doesn't make sense. Oh well, never mind. Hey ho, they fit. That's the most important thing. And look who's just opened as well. Oh, this is Ricodendrum, Cavalgata, and Verde. Beautiful. We'll see more of her in another video. Money shot. Money shot. <laughs> That's Golden Cell to the right. Thank you so much for watching. I have to take all these beauties outside now. Time to enjoy some sun. Everybody have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition though, please stay safe and take care. Bye.